Most importantly, Lord, for your presence and your power and anointing. And we thank you, Lord. In the name that's above every name. Yes. And we celebrate now the testimonies of the God. Yes. As a result of what you're doing in your life and your peers. Yes. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Yes. And all the honor in Jesus' name. And we say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. And uh, thank you all again for, for sharing your testimonies and all that you're doing. What God is doing in your lives and what he has done what he has to do. Praise God. And I also want to thank uh, Darlene for being here today. She's in the middle of a hug right now, so she's not here. It's good to see her. It's great to see her again. And we do get to communicate off and on, not as often as it probably should, but we still get to communicate back and forth besides just the Facebook, and, and she has been a part of this church from its inception, and still is, amen, an important part, and we appreciate her and Don, and they're, they're, not only they're being a part of this church, but their continued uh, support for the church, and that goes for uh, uh, others uh, out there that are strictly connecting through Facebook, but yet still support the church, and we appreciate that very much, and we're looking forward to the time we can all be back together again, and for those who are here locally where they can be. And also for the uh, advancement of the technological uh, ways of doing these things and getting this out to more and more people. And for that, I want to thank Mike and Suzanne. Amen. Who, by the way, just purchased another two computers to uh, upgrade everything back there. Thank you. Well, they're, doing, they're doing so much that I can't, and you have no idea what, what they're doing in the thank background, you. but uh, we're thank really you. grateful to them for that. And, yeah. and all of their. They're helping Suzanne. We were talking about this before church about opening up on Wednesdays and uh, doing more of the uh, Friday night, the Eastern Gate House of Prayer, and so forth. And I just said I was just so grateful because the Lord's been dealing with me about giving more opportunities for people to minister and be a part of what's going on here. But I hate to just dump it on somebody, you know, and I, I'm only doing so much, and, and they have to, in order to do any of this stuff, they have to be involved, and, and they both work full time jobs. And, so I, I was just grateful that she brought it up and I didn't have to. And so thank you for that. And we're just grateful for everything that they're doing. And for all of you that are participating, supporting the church, and have for years and years. It's, you know, sometimes you look around and you think, why? Well, God has a purpose. Yes. And just like yes. all of our, maybe the promises God has made to us individually, we haven't seen it come to pass, but they will. And he can do in a day what can take 40 years. Amen. So thank God for him and what he's doing. And we'll continue to do. Eric, great to see you. And uh, we just love you guys so much. Been a part of the church for so long. And God's got a plan. And yes, has a he does. We, we get in the way a lot of times. But uh, I promise you, whatever he's called, he'll bring to pass. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Amen. Praise the Lord again. Thanks again to everybody that's joining us on Facebook. We appreciate that. Sometimes I forget because I get caught up in the, what's going on here and I forget to acknowledge that you are out there, but we are grateful to you and appreciate you participating in the service and being a part of it. And you certainly are. The Spirit has no, uh, there's no, uh, you know, distance in God and in His Spirit so He can be as powerful where you are at this very moment that He is in our lives right here as well. And we believe that He is. So praise God. Amen. It is Pentecost Sunday, and I just wanted, I just saw this the other, the other day, and I was thinking about all the crap that's going on in the world, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit this morning. I'm going to have to talk fast, because y'all took up a lot of time here. So <laughs> you didn't, it was the Lord, and I'm not afraid. Amen. That's the way we want it. Praise the Lord. But uh, in Strong's Concordance, it talks about the, the Pentecost, and of course, most of us realize that it's... The number is 4005. You can all look this up yourself so you don't just have to take my word for it. But of course, it means 50th, and it's the 50 days after uh, Passover that we celebrate uh, Pentecost or the Jewish festival of Pentecost. And uh, if you look that up in Strong's Concordance, Pentecost comes from the number you would use, it would be 2250. That's the, the basis for what that word comes from. And it literally means the time and space, get this now, between dawn and darkness. Oh, yes. Mm. This blew my mind when I read it. 
and it's reckoned by the Jews as inclusive, the parts of both extremes. Yes. So that's where we're at, isn't it? I mean, yes. between the dawn and the darkness, it'd be a good time to be celebrating that. What happened on Pentecost yes. is what we're experiencing and going to experience even to a greater yeah. degree yes. than they did before the darkness come, falls on this earth. Amen. And we are the, the children of light. And the scripture talks so much about us being a light in the darkness. And of course we see the darkness getting darker and darker every day uh, with all that's going on around us. So I just want to talk, and I'm, this is going to be random to begin with, but just bear with me. Because I'm just picking up so much stuff from all over the place. But anyway, you think about uh, the Black Lives Matter. And we have black people, African Americans, uh, uh, part of this church. And we appreciate them so much and we love them. They're people just like everybody else for crying out loud. There's, no, there's only one race. It's the human race. The rest of this is all just stuff that we've created through our own stupidity and, and frustrations and so on and so forth. <coughs> But I, I, I saw this the other day, and here, here's what I'm saying. Of course black lives matter. I mean, every life matters. Yes. And again, I'm saying, I'm not a black person, so I can't, I can't honestly relate. And I'm just being honest, okay? But I can't empathize, and I can't sympathize with the stuff that people go through. Whatever the nationality, or whatever race they might be. And it hurts me to see the, the bias, the bigotry, and the hatred. But there's, that goes on with the Jewish people as well. It's, it's, yes. it's, a, it's, a, it's a horrible thing. It's demonic. Yes, yes it is. But it's a fact. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Antifa and some of these things, they're wrong. I don't care who's doing it. There's as many white people involved in those things. Yes. Burning buildings and yes. creating chaos, and that is there are black people. So <laughs> I'm not, that's why I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. It's just people that have... Yes. A, a misunderstanding of who they are, what they are, and what God yes. wants for their life. The Amen. book of Esther, if you think about it, it's really a book of racism. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It just happens to be about Jewish people. It's in there, and black people, I'm sure, and I hope I'm using the right terminology here, African Americans, they're just people to me. I mean, yes. come on, I, I just deal with people one-on-one. On people. One. They're just friends, or they're, yep. or they're yes. not, or they're just people I know. And, that I care about. So that book is a book of, about racism. And a lot of people have wondered, why is that book even in the Bible? I can tell you why. God's mm -hmm. God's it's because we're living in a time where people need to understand. God is against racism. Yes. He puts it in there to let us know. Yes. But here's what I'm going to tell you. The people who don't come to their senses about this end up receiving what they're trying to put on other people. Yes. The book of Esther, it comes back on Haman yes. and those who are trying to create this chaos and confusion yes. and hatred and killing people and murdering people. These yes. people are God's people. Yes. We're all yes. God's people if we're believers. Yes. And we need to look at things a little bit differently. If you look at, in Acts chapter 13, there's a man by the name of Niger, N-I-G-E-R. He lays hands on Paul. He, he anoints him to go out and do the work that Paul's going to do, which is write three-fourths of the New Testament and, and reach millions of, of uh, Gentiles, non-Jews, who would become believers in, over the course of time. Mm -hmm. This guy, Niger, means black. Right. That's what the definition, this man was a black man who laid hands on Paul. So don't tell me about bigotry. God chose a black man to anoint the man who's going to give us two-thirds of the New Testament, the New Covenant, amen, and reach the world for Jesus. Come on. So you can look it up for yourself. I'm just saying, there is no difference in us as human beings as far as God is concerned. For God's sake, there should not be any difference in our minds or in our hearts. That's right. And people that are promoting this hatred, and I'm not saying there isn't guilt, there's plenty of guilt to go around. It goes back for centuries, and we all know that. But I want to talk to you this about this. The first great awakening, and a lot of people talking about this as a great awakening, there'll be a great awakening here. I, I've watched some things on uh, Christian television about this, but I just want to say that the first great awakening, you watch the wall builders, there's a really have some really good understanding of American history and how this nation was started by prayer, by belief in God, with a covenant with God from the Mayflower. That Mayflower Compact was basically a covenant. So first of all, they said, for God Almighty, amen. And then they move on from that and say, this nation is 
going to be created for one purpose, or for two purposes, actually. One, to glorify God, and two, to further the gospel Amen. of Jesus Christ. Woo. Come on. Now, that's the, what this nation was supposed to be built on. I don't Amen. care what anybody tries to tell us today. They want to undo all of that and say that isn't the case. It is the case. It's historically yes. there. Yeah. You can't yeah. deny yeah. it. It's in the history books. It's, yeah. it's written down. It's, it's there. It's true. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And so we have a covenant with God. We do, yes. We made the covenant with God. Yes. God made the covenant yes. with Israel, but God still honors covenant. Yes. yes. So this nation's not going anywhere until God's done with it. Amen. That's right, first of all. Amen. 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 And that first great awakening lasted for decades. And it brought about the Revolutionary War. Uh -huh. Because why? Because the church, not because of people. And I, I found out something really fan unbelievable. 30% of the people in the United States at that time, which was not the United States, but 30% of the people were loyalists. They were against leaving uh, the king and, and England. 30% right. didn't care one way or another. They were indifferent. Right. And about approximately 30%, 20-some percent, were, wanted to leave England, wanted to be separated from England and be a nation of our own. So they weren't under the... Under the uh, control of the king, plus there was or there was a religious, the government and religion were one, you had to be an Anglican uh, to have any position or anything else, and so they were against that. The truth is, out of that 20-some percent that were for the American Revolution, only 9% participated. Wow. Wow. <coughs> now here's what I'm saying. God doesn't need a majority. That's right. If That's he right. Give us liberty from an oppressive king and, and foreign government with 9% of the population. Come on in. Sure, we got nothing to worry about. But it was the church that caused this thing to happen because preachers were standing up in the pulpit and saying, I'm going to fight for this. Give me liberty Who's or give me death. An entire congregation would get up, strap on their rifle, and go. Amen. Or their and go out and fight against the tyranny. Yeah. Yes. All right. The second great awakening started shortly after the end of the first great awakening in the very early 1800s. Mm -hmm. And again, it started in the churches. Yeah. Because in the South, pastors had tried to justify slavery by using the Bible, saying, well, there was slavery. In, in, in the Bible. But it wasn't condoned. It wasn't like we wanted it or it was supposed to be that way. Some of them were indentured slaves, but some of them were were slaves. And the Bible isn't endorsing it. It isn't encouraging it. So other pastors, abolitionists, began to preach that is not biblical. It's not God's purpose to have people in slavery in bondage. It's wrong. We need to do something about it. Well, that went on for decades. Until finally, it led to the Civil War. Right. Well, slavery wasn't the only reason, but it was the major reason for it. Abolition, because it was financial as well. Yeah. Obviously, the, the slave owners and the plantations and so on and so forth. It was a monetary issue, a financial issue. Mm -hmm. But it began in the churches. Amen? Mm -hmm. Both of those revolutions began in the churches, and that's why the churches... Had such a, when when England came over in the Revolutionary War, they burnt the churches. Why? Because that's who was fomenting this revolution. That's who was promoting this revolution. Why? Because because of the church. You know. Let me tell you something. They, you know what the Pilgrims did? They they were totally. They said you have to be baptized. You have to be. You have to have made a confession of faith. You have. There was multiple things you had to do to be a, to have any kind of a job within that in that particular time when the pilgrims first started. Right. Now they loved the Lord, but they were very strict about this. Well over time they found they discovered that a lot of people aren't coming to church. So you know what they did? This is historic fact. They started saying, well, you know, anybody can come. So we can increase the numbers of people and we'll get a little more money that way. We can have more income for the church. That's what they did. And it wasn't long before they had more people, but they had less God. Yeah. Mm. Amen. They had moved. Now listen, I'm telling you this for this reason. Because we know that our churches today, 
who have gay pastors, who marry homosexuals, who endorse uh, transgendering. Now I know I'm going to, people hate that, they don't like talking about it. I don't like talking about it, but I'm telling you, we're at a point where it's time somebody has to say something. Yeah. Yes. Because Amen. we are not, this is not, we don't hate the people. No. But if it's, yes. if it's biblically wrong, it's biblically wrong today, yes. the same as it was 4,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, or whatever. Come on. Amen. So that's why I'm addressing it. That's why I'm going to talk Thank about Thank you, Pastor. Today, if you curse Israel, you're cursed. That's right. Yes. We've got people rioting in our cities yes. because we want to support Israel or because some of us support Israel. That's right. right. I'm telling you, you better be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Right. You better be I praying for God's yes. blessing yes. and God's yes. protection. Yes. 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 You're going to have it one way or another. Yes. Yes. And if you're not, then you're on the wrong side of this. Right. Yes. That's right. Praise That's right. the Lord. Yes. yes. Our God was a Jew. Yes, he was. Yes. And he still is. Yes. 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 <laughs> and he's going to rule. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today, that's part of it. The hatred of Israel that we're seeing. Yes. Abortion. Abortion is murder. I don't care what you call it. It's murder. It's child sacrifice. It's sacrificing yes. children. That's right. It's what Moab and some of these yes. horrible people in, in the Old Testament were doing, which is why God wanted them wiped out. Yes. You know? yeah. Churches are being shut down all over the United States, all over the world, in fact. In Canada, they're locking preachers up. They're setting fire to their homes. They're doing all kinds of insane stuff. Here, right here in the United States, they shut down churches. I can tell you two people, in particular, Kayon, which is in California, and a UPC preacher who is also in California, a pastor there, Andrew Womack in Colorado, they were all sued by the government because they wouldn't shut down their churches. Yeah. And they arrested and or threatened to arrest them and their congregations if they continued to hold services. Kayon, and they were finding them every day. Every, every day. This Kayon, he, who is a, 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 I don't know, if not really a Pentecostal, but it's full gospel church, you know, mm -hmm. believing in the Holy Spirit, so on and so forth. Okay. He sued the governor of California and won. for trying to lock him down. They went to the lower courts two or three times, which are totally stuffed with liberal, especially in California, with liberal judges, and they denied him, and they denied him, and they denied him. But because of this other UPC pastor who was doing the same thing, the Supreme Court sees it and said, well, maybe we need to take a look at this because there's more than one. And the Supreme Court upheld yes. the churches. Come on. Yes. Now, here's what happened. More, not only did they uphold those churches and tell them you have a right to be open regardless of whatever the conditions are going on around you, and the government has no right to shut you down That's for right. any reason. Yes. And they did that in what is called perpetuity. So whatever the government wants to do uh, six months from now, or six years from now, or 60 years from now, if the Lord would interrogate that long, they cannot shut down those churches. Yeah, now that's the Supreme Court, so that's going to have an impact on every church in the United States. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Andrew Womack went through the same thing. He had to sue them because they were finding him and going to lock down his ministry, and he won too. He also won. So I'm telling you, God is still with us, yeah. yes. even though it looks like, but there's a lot of fearful Always. people Thank you, Jesus. that are still shut down, that are scared, that are afraid, that are, who knows what their motives are. This just, I read this just the other day. A, a baby was born, this is right here in the United States, and the doctor said, do you want to identify the gender now or wait till they're older? Mm -hmm. What does that make any sense to anybody? But that's what they're doing now. They're saying you can wait and decide. Hey, it only takes a cursory glance <laughs> to know. And you don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a scientist. But that's what's happening right now in this country. Yes. Mm. 
God created them. Male and female created he them. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And on and on and on I could go. The schools are teaching choose your sex. A college in Arkansas is being fined and threatened to shut them down because they won't have unisex bathrooms. In other words, anybody can go into any bathroom any time. That's just a portion of what this nation and this world is dealing with. Mm -hmm. The school is teaching our children, you can choose your sex. Mm -hmm. At a very early age, when these kids are not even to puberty yet, when they're not even to a place where they can rationally yeah. understand any of these things. But that's what we're facing as Christians today. And I, for one, I'm sick of it. I've got grandchildren, two of them sitting here this morning. Breaks my heart to think what, yeah. what they'll be dealing with if they go to a public school. And here's what. Pergamos. Remember, Jesus had these letters that were written to the churches in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. you know what Pergamos means? It means the wrong kind of marriage. Mm -hmm. They were involved with the, the, the heathen around them. They were having sex with the people around them. They were intermarrying. They were doing all sorts of weird and perverted stuff. They had some good things going for them, but there was some negative crap going on at the same time. And it means the marriage of the church and the world. Mm -hmm. Think about the, the church that Jesus started in the book of Acts. What happened? 325, within 325 years of that church, <coughs> Constantine embraces the entire movement and makes it a part of the Roman hierarchy. And we went into a dark age that lasted for a thousand or more years right. until the Reformation. Right. It was a marriage between the world and the church. And we're still dealing with it today. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. It's what Jesus dealt with with Israel. He said, do not marry the heathen. What, you know what Balaam did? He was, he was told to curse Israel. He tried to God wouldn't let him. He ended up blessing Israel. And so the king said, well, what am I going to do? You know, I, you're supposed to be the guy that can do this stuff. And Balaam says, well, if you can't curse them, get them to marry into the people that are around them. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. And we know the result of that was thousands of people died. Right. Chaos ensued. And so Balaam was saying, if you can't curse them, corrupt them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Jesus said in that scripture, I'm going to take the time to go there, but he said, I, I didn't come just to bring peace. Yes. He said, I came to set mother against daughter. Father against son, brother against brother, even husband against wife. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if they won't follow the scripture, then we have to separate from them. You have to, you cannot, I, I understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying people don't fail or people won't fall. I'm talking about when we start embracing, when the church starts saying, this is the way we should go. <laughs> that you can pick your own sex, that homosexuality is endorsed by God, that this is good, that we're marrying the world. Yeah. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got it. And if you think about it, I'm just going to move on from here, but faith connects us with Adam. Don was talking about faith is the thing, and it is. Yes. Because it connects us with Adam in the garden before the fall. What was it? 
God provided everything that they had need of. Yes, thank you. As long as they just lived by faith. As long as they lived in the faith of what God had said to them, everything they needed, they were going to have. It wasn't until they started co-opting the enemy, the devil, and believing his crap, that they, faith was gone. They, they didn't exercise faith, and the result was they ended up in the enemy's camp. We need to keep praying, church. Amen. Amen. Like never before. Yes. Right. Yes. Mike and Suzanne gave me a New Testament, 26 translations. Mm -hmm. That will just give you a headache. <laughs> but I'm going to read you one, one translation from, the, from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 9. And it's about the woman and the unjust judge. And Jesus, in this translation, says, He gave them an illustration to show how necessary it is for people always to pray and never give up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Once upon a time, there was a magistrate in a town who had no fear of God and no respect for man. There was a widow in that city, and she went to him again and again, saying, Please protect me from this man who's trying to ruin me. He was unwilling for a time to help her. But in the end, he said to himself, True, I care nothing for God or man. Yet because this widow is such a nuisance, I'll give judgment in her favor to stop her from plaguing me with her endless visits. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, contrast the thoughts of this dishonest judge with those of God. Mm -hmm. And God, will not he see that his own people have justice done them who appeal to him? Although he delays vengeance on their behalf, I tell you, he will indeed give judgment for them. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man does come, will he find men on earth who believe in him? Yeah. Now this is actually the next verse, but I think sometimes we twist these things and get them out of, out of sync. Because the very next verse is, he addressed this parable to some who relied on themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who trusted in their own rationale yes. rather than God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. All right, now I'm going to preach a message here. <laughs> All right, ten minutes. It ain't going to happen. Praise <laughs> the Lord. But look at Genesis chapter 1. I want you to read verses 1 through 4. Mm. And I believe, I do believe this is the Lord. I've been, I mean, I have been. It's, it's been strange. I, I have told the Lord. I want you in my consciousness 24 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. Every moment I'm awake, I want to be aware of you, your presence, that we are one. Right? And it really laid it on my heart over the last couple of weeks, and I've been praying this every morning. I want more of you and less of me. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Amen. I want to die. I don't want to die physically. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, but God knows what I'm saying. Yes. I want to die to my agenda. Yes. I want Jesus to be have full access know what we gotta do. and do whatever he yes. wants to do yes. through me. Well, and I'm yes. not talking about being weird. Anybody that knows me knows that I can't go that way. I'm not a, a religious kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just want him yes. to be able to minister through me and do what he wants to do through me, whatever that takes. And I ask for courage yes. and for boldness. Because don't kid yourself. Yes. Some of this yes. stuff frightens me. We need strength, yes. Lord. Amen. <laughs> I'm not so afraid that I won't act. That's right. I'm just afraid enough to be uncomfortable. Yes. yes. Mm. But I know what God is saying to me, or I wouldn't be saying the things I've already said this morning. Because I avoided him as much as I could. Right. Because I don't like hurting people, and I don't want to be misunderstood. Right. But we'll worry past that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Jesus loved people. Yes. But he was never culturally accepted. Right. He was never accepted in his own culture. Right. And that's what the Lord's been dealing with me about. There are some things that are more important than just being yes. like by everybody. Yes. 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 That's where we're at now. That's the cost. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form 
and glory. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Verses 26 through 31. God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now he said, let them, let make man in our image, and let them. So he wasn't just talking about Adam and Eve. He was talking about every human that would come from them. All of us, everybody, uh, every human being, right? So God created man. Not a man, but he was creating man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Everything that he had made, yes. and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Genesis 2, verse 7. <laughs> and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Verse 15. And the Lord God took the man, put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us yes. in every place. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I may just say some of these scriptures for the sake of time, but you can write it down, you can go back and look at them, get the CD or whatever. I'm not BSing anybody. The scriptures I'm giving are legitimate. They're in the scripture here, they're in the Bible. It's the word of God. Come on. So in Ezekiel, well, let me, let me not get ahead of myself. When God created the earth, we just read this, he put Adam in paradise. Amen? Not just to work it, but to take care of it. To, right, to protect it. Mm -hmm. And it seems obvious that there must have been some kind of evil, some power other than God, that Adam was to watch for and to guard against. Because God said everything he created in that six days was good. It was very good. Amen? So there had to have been some evil there from previous time. So the Bible doesn't tell us how that evil came to be or, or how it came about to exist there or where it came from. But there's some really obvious clues. And one of them is in Ezekiel chapter 28. You don't have to go there. But it's where God cast... Satan out of the mountain of God for being profane. He said, as he cast Satan as profane out of the mountain of God. Mm -hmm. Where did he cast him to? In Luke chapter 10, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall out of heaven. I saw him cast out of heaven to the earth. Praise the Lord. That might explain why we had cavemen, Neanderthal, dinosaurs, and all the chaotic mess that was here that we have, you know, fossil evidence of that the scientists and the atheists want to argue against the, the six-day reality of creation because there was something existed here prior to that, and it was Satan having fallen, developing his own kingdom of chaos and stupidity and ignorance, and, and we're not 
from those things. Mm. We are a whole new creation. Right. Yes. Glory. They didn't have the breath of God. They didn't have the knowledge of God. They didn't have the awareness. They were just animalistic. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Satan cast out. Mm -hmm. Amen. That was his initial kingdom. Now, I, I don't have any proof of this. I'm not trying to, you know, write a book. I'm just saying. Common sense, if you know anything about the Bible, tells us this is the reality that we're dealing with. Right. Amen. So it's enough to know that evil existed and that it threatened the very center of this new creation. Mm -hmm. The garden of God. And the dwelling place of man. And that threat was danger and destruction. Yes. My point is, this is just as true today as it was then. Yeah. Mm. God wants to rob this evil of its power. Yes. And his plan to do it is through us. Yes. yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it follows that man was created not only for relationship with God or fellowship with God and to be God's children, but for the purpose of conquering the evil that existed in this place before us. And that would explain the significance of the earth being the historic center of the universe. Yeah. Could have been anywhere, but it is here. Mm -hmm. What does Satan say? I want, I'm going to be like God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have my own world. I'm going to have my own creation. I'm going to have my... And look at the mess that he made. Yeah. I don't think so. Satan, whose power, evil power, mm -hmm. probably caused the formlessness and the chaos that God saw when he spoke. Yes. This darkness, this confusion. There it is. That's good. He still wanted to, the devil still wanted to maintain his kingdom. Yeah. In the very world that God had raised out of his, out of the mess that he had made, out of the ruins that he had created from his previous kingdom. Isn't that just like the Lord? But isn't it just like a devil to not give up and want to continue to destroy anything that's good, anything that has value? Yes. It was on earth that man was created to conquer evil and to cast it out. Yes. And that's what makes the world so important to God and his angels. It's the battlefield between heaven and hell. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There's more to this than us just either going to heaven or going to hell. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Think about it. God gives us types and shadows all the time. In the Old Testament, what do you have? You have Israel. I talked about it briefly. You have Israel doing what? Destroy all of these other yes. nations. Mm -hmm. And you got atheists today and others going, oh no, yeah, what a horrible God. If you had a clue, you moron, of what was, they were dealing with, you'd understand this was demonic. This yes. God had one opportunity yes. to have an opportunity for him to come into this world. And in order to do that, he had to rid it of the satanic influence that was dominating everything. Yes, yeah. yes. amen. Yeah. Kill them all. Kill everyone. Don't let any live. Not even the sheep. The Hittites, the Amorites, the Philistines, the Hivites, the Gergeshites, the Amorites, the images go on and on yes. and on. They were all demonic. They were all offering child yes. sacrifices. They yes. were murdering one another. They were cannibalistic. There were all of these horrible things that were going on. The only way to explain or understand the terrible history of mankind is through the scripture. And it's teaching that God rules over the kingdom of light, yes. but there is a kingdom of darkness. Yes. Right. Amen. There is an organized system, an evil kingdom that rules yes. over men. And it keeps them in darkness. And it uses them to war against the kingdom of God's Son. Yes. And we're seeing it today like never before. Yes. Yes. Even though the outcome is not in question, the struggle is still long and destructive. In the history of that struggle, the cross is the turning point. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Colossians 2, let's go there. Colossians 2, verses 14 and 15. Colossians 2, verses 14 and 15. Blotting out the hand, handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled yes. principalities yes. and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Yes. Well, these were not little floating around in the sky. This was demonic.
possessions yes. and oppression right here on this planet. Right. That Jesus dealt with. Yes. And much of it in the religious world. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The power of darkness attacked Christ with everything that was terrible, everything that it had within its evil power. Mm -hmm. Surrounding him with the very darkness of hell. Mm -hmm. A cloud so thick and dark, the very light of God's face was hidden from him on the cross. Look at Matthew 27, verses 45 and 46. Say that again. 27, 45. Matthew 27, verses 45 and 46. Thank you. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm. But Jesus defeated him. Yes. He beat him back. He beat back the forces of evil, the enemy, yep. and overcame the temptation to save his own life. Yes. What I was talking about last week. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm telling you, God's been dealing with me about this. We have to be crucified with Christ. Yes. Amen. If we're going to live the light that will destroy the enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about being religious idiots. I'm talking about our focus. Yes. i got to die to myself yeah. so that Jesus can live through me. It's not easy. God is nothing yeah. compared to what Jesus went through, but it's frightening even to, when you pray that. Thank you. Okay, Lord, what might be on your agenda here that I'm not going to want to be a part of? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to have this yeah. or that or the other, you know. Yeah. Nevertheless, we got to get to the place where not my will, but Christ who liveth in me. That's our purpose for being in church. It's not to see how many people we can get in the building. Yeah. It's not to see how much attention we can get no. on TV no. or how much money we can raise or how much, how big a house or whatever it might be. I'm talking about ministry, but we're all ministers. Yes. Yes. Of the gospel of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was the purpose for this nation to be created. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. He made a show of them openly throughout yes. the entire spiritual realm. Before angels. Amen. Amen. Before devils. Amen. And it was proven that he conquered. There was no question. There was no argument that he whipped them. Yes. Now look at Matthew. 27, verse 52 and 53. Hallelujah. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept were rose. Don, when you said that about your brother, I almost flipped. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a resurrection, church. Yes! The dead will rise. Yes! He said, when, when Jesus came off that cross, when he yes. was crucified, Yes. The graves were open, and bodies of the saints which slept arose. Yes. yes. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. You were, you were prophesying yes. a yes. biblical truth. Yes. 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 And God helped us to see it. Resurrected sons see and daughters. Come on. Yes. yes. Mm. Triumph over the enemy. Death. Yes. The thing that he uses, the last resort. Yes. Yep. The last resort against he used against Jesus, but Jesus Hallelujah. didn't give in. He said, okay. Hey, yes. I'm going to believe Hallelujah. that God has provided something better. Yes. Yeah. That even if I give myself, yeah. there's a greater reward. Yes. And if we give our flesh, our yes. purpose, our, our thoughts, our hungers, like God said. And I'm not, again, I'm not just trying to side with Don. I'm just saying the things you were saying is exactly what God has been saying to me. We've all gotten off on our own path at times. We've all deviated from what we were experiencing when we were first born again or when we were first received the Jesus of the Holy Spirit or whatever it was. And we get, well, come on, we're going to heaven. Let's just enjoy the world a little bit. Mm. It's all right, we're in the world. We're just not of the world. Hallelujah. Yeah. It doesn't mean we can't enjoy life. It doesn't mean we can't experience things. It just means our focus has to be something mm -hmm. other than that being the thing that satisfies me. Mm -hmm. That being the thing that fulfills me. That being the thing that defines me. Yes. yes. The spirit world 
You know, in the spirit world, the cross is the symbol of victory. Yes. It's a slap in the face every time they yes. see one. Every time it's spoken of. Wow. The enemy's power was broken forever. Yes. And the gates of that prison, the gates of hell, yes. were broken over. And that gate of hell that held men captive, they were set free. Because freedom was proclaimed to all the prisoners. Mm -hmm. If thou canst believe. Mm -hmm. If you believe. The prince of this world has been cast out. He has no power over you anymore. Yes. He now only rules over those who consent to be his slaves. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing lots of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is perfect deliverance for anybody yes. who gives himself to Jesus in the cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Total, final, forever victory. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. It's finished, you said. Amen. It is. It is. Yes. Ephesians 4 and 8. Mm. So here we are. The scripture that always confused me was Jesus said he had put all of his enemies under his footstool, but he's waiting until they all be put under his footstool. Yeah. Oh. Under his feet. Yeah. He defeated them. Now we have to. And we do it through him. Yes. 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 Amen. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Yes. The gifts of the Spirit. Yes. yes. Power to overcome the enemy. Praise the Lord. Yes. First Corinthians 15, 54 and through 58. He gave us gifts. Sword of the Spirit. Shield of faith, yes. helmet of salvation, feet shot in the preparation of the gospel of peace, loins girded about, right? I mean, he gave us yes. His the gift to lay hands on the sick and see him recover, yes. to cast out demons with our tongue, yes. to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Yes. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptions, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Let me just ask you one thing. When, when, when did Jesus leave in corruption and put on immortality after the resurrection? And Paul said, how did they do this? I, I've always asked myself, how did they do this so consistently? How was Paul able to do it? I'll tell you, he told us. I was crucified with Christ. Yes. Yes. Yet I live. But not, not I. I, but it's Christ yes. that lives in me. If we were crucified with him, he says, you also shall be resurrected with him. And when we do that, we are no longer corruptible. We yes. have now become incorruptible. We now have become yeah. immortal. Yes. Because why? We're operating by the spirit and yes. not by the flesh. Yes. 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 We don't have to die. No. To operate by the spirit. We just have to die to the flesh. Yes. The sting of death, the sin, the strength of sin is the law. So why, you know, I mean, it's like confusing two different issues. No, it isn't, because for us, it's the law yes. that keeps us focused on our flesh. That's right. Mm -hmm. Grace releases us to be able to operate, not to be idiots and just act like crazy people, yeah. but to understand that if we fail, there's forgiveness. Right. Yeah. So that we can operate yes. by the Spirit yes. without constantly being condemned by the enemy. We need to kick him out. Yes. Kick him out. Yes. So he can't come and tell, oh, you can't be used by God because, I mean, look what you did last week or look what you said yesterday. That guy doesn't exist. That's he was right. crucified with Christ. Yes. I am resurrection. Yes. I am incorruptible. Yes. You have no power over me. And he doesn't unless he can get us in the flesh and That's get us right. back into that yeah. free yes. cross condition. Yes. Satan, get thee behind me. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 Without our understanding, church, of this truth, the truth of the cross, and how we are identified that with that, our experience of the power of the cross is defective, and that's what we've been experiencing for generations. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. 
The cross is triumphant over the yes. powers of darkness. Yes. John 16, verse 33. And I'll tell you why he doesn't like it. Because his power, the only power yeah. he has is to keep people in darkness. That's right. Yeah. Oh, let your light shine, Lord. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you're going to have crap. In the world you're going to have this idiocy that we're dealing with right now. Yes. yes. You're going to have tribulation, but be it good, good cheer. cheer. I will be coming Thank you, Jesus. And you will as well. Thank Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Only the truth of the cross can teach us to know the supernatural strength that we have available to us yeah. and the subtlety of the enemy. Yeah. Yes. Nothing else can teach us what our purpose is and what it must be mm -hmm. but the cross. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's right. <laughs> but against those same principalities, those same powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, yes. Yes. against spiritual wickedness in yes. high places. We'll cast them down. Yeah. Well, you could say presidency, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. High places. The Fuhrer. Cast them down, Lord. The czar. Mm -hmm. the, the, the mouths. Think, think of the millions of lives yes. that were destroyed. Yeah. That was God? No. No. That was man in darkness. Right. Mm -hmm. Manipulated and controlled by an evil power that they were ignorant of mm -hmm. because he blinds them to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The purpose is to bring people out of the world, away from the power of this prince. Amen. Galatians 6.14. Now I'm going to show you some things here that you probably may already be aware of, but it's, it's to help us focus on where we're at today. God forbid that I should glory saving the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Paul. Now, what's his, what, what would he be glorying about? Well, he was raising the dead. He was casting out demons. He, was, he had been stoned to death. He had been drowned. He had all these things happen to him. But he, he's saying, look, I'm, I, I can't take any credit for any of this. I'm not going to glory for any of it except in the cross of Jesus yes. Christ, yes. by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. In other words, the world is dead as far as I'm concerned. And I'm dead to the influence of the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the meaning of the word world, as Jesus used it, is simple. It describes fallen mankind. Mm -hmm. And it's in its fallen state, its alienation from God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus regarded it as an organized system or kingdom that's the very opposite and the enemy of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's why he says, you are children of light. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. I am the light of the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of light. The kingdom mm -hmm. of his dear son. And what does it battle against? Darkness. Yep. Yes. 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 The evil. The kingdom of Satan. Yep. The world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Mm -hmm. yes. The world is the unseen power. Yes. Right. And Satan rules it. Right. I know. I'm thinking of Dairy Queen. <laughs> it's in the world. You know what I'm saying? We've got to understand, not everything is evil. But the world is controlled and manipulated by evil. Right. Yeah. Yes. 
And there is an unseen power that rules. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the God of this world. Yes. Satan. 1 Corinthians 2.12 Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, so that we can know the things that are freely given to us of God. What he gave us as a result of the crucifixion, the cross, right? The Spirit of the world pervades and it gives the world strength. John 8, 23. And he said, and then you are from beneath, I am from above, you are of the world, I am not of this world. Who was he talking to? He was talking to the Pharisees. That's the, that's the conversation he was having. Yep. John 15, verses 18 and 19. Mm. If the world hates you, you know it hated me before it hated you. Mm -hmm. You want to know it? Just start saying some of the things we've been talking about. This yes, morning. Lord. Yeah. See how quickly you're identified yeah. as someone's behavior. Mm -hmm. You're a homophobe. You're a bigot. You're a racist. I'm not any of those things. I don't hate homosexuals. I'm just saying it goes against right. the word of God. Yeah. Right. Certainly not a racist, because God was for every race. There's only one race, but you know what I'm saying. Every skin color, every ethnicity. I'm not a racist. I don't care if they're black, they're white, they're yellow, they're red, whatever. If they're trying to burn down my house, they're an enemy. Yes. Amen. Amen. Right? Right. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying there haven't been injustices that need to be addressed. Yeah, right. But there's a godly way of addressing them. Right. I still love to forgive. Again, I'm not, I, I, I've never been a black man or a black woman, obviously. I, don't, I, don't, I, I can't relate. Forgive me for that. But I can't empathize and I can't sympathize with the wrongs that have been done. But there's a way. And I respect the men and women who have stood for God in the face of this against some of their own people sometimes and had to really take a lot of heat and a lot of pressure and a lot of vindictiveness yeah. for trying to be obedient to God. Yeah. Yeah. I have the greatest respect for that. Yeah. But that's where we're all at. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the world hates you, you know it, that it hated me before it hated you. Right. If you're of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Right. Duh. It, it should have come as a shock to us. <laughs> you're right. Yep. Yeah. John 14, 30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Luke 22, verse 53. When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me. He's talking to the Pharisees again. Mm -hmm. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. This is when they arrested him. Mm -hmm. He said, I was in the temple all the time. Why didn't you do something now? Right. Because yeah. this is your hour. Amen. The power of darkness. The difference in the antagonism between the two kingdoms is irreconcilable. Which is why God would say in the Old Testament, I don't want any survivors. Right. This thing can't be reasoned out. Yeah. Right. No matter how much Christianity influences this world yeah. externally. Mm -hmm. The nature is going to be the same. Right. 
The only way to overcome is to be born of God. Yes. yes. Yep. First John 5, 4, you don't have to go there, but First John 5, 4 says, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Yes. Even our faith. Yes. And the war. You know, there's nothing more dangerous than underestimating the power of your enemy. Yes. Ephesians 6, 12. The weapons of our warfare are not common. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against people. Mm-hmm. We're fighting against the darkness, the influence of Satan. Mm-hmm. We were there. Yeah. Yes. We were among that number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's an organized force that is unknowingly led and inspired by an evil power. And we look at them and we say, how in the world can they believe that? Because their minds have been, their eyes have been blinded to the truth. Exactly. There's a power that fills it with its spirit. Its power is darkness. And it's led by the God of this world. Ephesians 2 2. Where in a time past, I walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of obedience, disobedience. Mm-hmm. We were all there at some point. Yep. We, may, we, we may not have been doing all the same crazy stuff going on today. But we were in darkness. Mm-hmm. We didn't have the power of the cross to deliver us from. And God help our children and grandchildren because the generations that we grew up in, the world had not dominated to the same degree that it does today. Right. On the same level. Yes, there were God ungodly leaders and horrible people that created wars and, and chaos and all that. But on an individual basis, there was still more of the influence of the cross. Right. And less of the submitting to the darkness. Right. That's not the case today. Right. Today it's so insane that you can't hardly have a conversation with people. You're using the wrong pronoun. That's the power of the other world. Yes. Whose principalities and powers are working on the earth in people, in men and women. And they can only be conquered and brought into subjection by a higher power. The power of Christ, the power of the cross. Colossians 2.15 is telling us that we've already read it, but praise God. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them open, the triumph of open. The power of the world. And you can see this. I'm not, I, I, I doubt that any of them know. They're ignorant. Right. At what the influence is that, that is causing them to do the things they're doing. But the thing is, they're so manipulated. What does he say? They may show them openly trying to have spoil principalities, powers, and so on and so forth. What is he, how, does he, how does he do that? How, how does this happen? The power of the world lies in its darkness. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to confuse everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to get us into darkness, into some place that is not explainable. I mean, something that is so weird and so insane and so nonsensical that you can't have a rational discussion about it. Right. Yeah. Right. There's how many different sexes? How I many are countless? They're, they're, they're numerous now. You know, I mean, it's nuts. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Revelation 12, verses 10 and 11, he says, I saw Satan. He gets he gets knocked on his rear. How does this happen? 
by the word of their testimony yes. and the blood of the Lamb, by the crucifixion, by the cross, yes. and our identification with it. Yes. Matthew 16, 19. They love not their lives unto death. He's not talking about we all run out and blow our brains out. We die to the flesh. We die to the thing that wants to control us and manipulate us. Again, I'm not saying you can't exist and have the fun that we have and enjoy life. But the focus has to be we are children of God. We, we are God's warriors. Mm. We are the people who he chooses to fight this battle. Yes. It's great to have an R&R. &R. You know, it's, it's great to have, you know, lead. A lot of us have been able for a long time <laughs> from the battles. Yeah. And he's calling us back. That's part of what the awakening is. Yes. yes. And I'll give you unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom yes. of light. Thy yes. kingdom comes. Yes. Right? Thy will be done. What are the keys? It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Yes. And Jesus said, man didn't give that to you. You didn't get that from the world. That, to you. that came from my Father. Mm -hmm. That came as a revelation from God himself. Because the world, he, you know, he told parables. He said, why are you telling these parables? Because the world would like to get some information. The enemy would like to get some information. And I'm not the enemy. Amen. Unless you have the spirit of God, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. You're still in darkness. That's right. There needs to be some light shine in you in order for you to comprehend mm -hmm. what the Lord is saying to mm -hmm. the church. Yes. What the Spirit says to the church, right? Yes. So I'm going to give you the keys. In other words, I'm going to give you the ability to access, not only access heaven, but to bring that yes. light here into the darkness, to bring light into darkness. Mm -hmm. Amen. We've got to speak out against the lies of this world against the kingdom of darkness. It's not going to be comfortable. I don't like it. I'm thinking right now, people that are going to be thinking, what, a, what kind of lunatic is this guy? What, what's he trying to do, start trouble? Is he you know, trying to create riots or something? No, I'm, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just trying to get the church to be the church again. Oh, there you go. Starting with me. Sword of I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying, I'm as guilty as anybody. I didn't know. I, I didn't understand until it hit me flat in the face what it is we're really up against here. Yes. It isn't we don't get the, the luxury of just kicking back and saying, well, okay, God, take care of it. God gave us dominion. Yes. God gave us authority. And yes. Jesus got it back for us. He didn't just come to deliver us from everything. He gave us the authority back so that we could function as he did in this world. Yes. And we're just sitting around waiting on Jesus to show up. And he's saying, I've done all I'm doing. It's now up to you. Come on. We've got to stand in faith. We've got to battle by the gifts of the Spirit, not with our own flesh and blood. What is wrong, and we know that it's wrong, we have, a, we have an obligation to say so. Right. Just the way that world does. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. When they try to lock us down, we say, no. We don't answer to you concerning this. Yes. In this area, we answer to God. If you're talking about taxes, I'll pay my taxes. If you're talking about being drafted or enlisting in the military to support the, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. But you're not telling me who my God is and how I'm going to serve Him and yes. when I will serve yes. Him and who I will serve That's Him. Right. Will serve. Amen. Yes. Battle by the spiritual gifts. The armor of God. Yes. And the finished work of the cross. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is finished. Christ. What is the finished work? Christ in, in you. you. The hope of the Lord. Yes. Hope and joy restored. The kingdom of light prevails. We know the end of the story. But there's yes. some battling that has to take place before that takes place. Mm -hmm. So he tells us, stand there. Stand fast. You stood against it. Now you're going to have to stand. You're going to have to stay 
stood. You're going to have to not be moved. You're, you're going to have to dig in and just say, I'm not leaving. I'm not moving. You're going to have to move me because I'm not going. I'm not going to voluntarily give this up. Right. And if we don't voluntarily give it up, God will be our real reward. Yes. He will be yes. our shield yes. and our seed yes. great reward. Yes. He'll be our shield in front and he'll be our real reward in the back. He yes. will he will circle us, us right and in with angelic yes. armies and give us the yes. victory over. I don't care how big and how bad it looks. Yes. Amen. I'm not going to go through all of it. You can look it up for yourself in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 about the armor and so on and so forth. Yes. Most of us are aware of that, but that's what we need to be doing. Yes. There's a great awakening to the finished work of the cross. That's what this great awakening is about. Waking up to what it is Jesus did and what it is He has given to us. Yes. yes. Resurrection power. But you got to die to get resurrected, yeah. folks. you got to die. you got to be crucified with Christ in order to be raised with Him. Yes. We love the resurrection part. It's the dying that ain't so good. <laughs> we know it because Jesus said, God, if there's any other way, yes. yeah. deliver me from it. Yeah. Yes. But nevertheless, yeah, I know your goodness. I know your faithfulness. Yes. I know your promises are yea and in you. Yes. Amen. And I'm not going to throw in the towel. You're with me. Amen. Yes. What happened? The greatest victory this world has yes. ever seen Amen. or ever will see. Come on. And all of heaven as well. Yes. yes. Mm. Yep. Life from death. Yes. yes. Amen. The life of God. The death of a man. Yes. You, when we give our lives, and I'm not talking about getting out in the street and shooting people, and you know that. You know what I'm saying. Right. When we give our natural desires and wanting to dominate things and operate that in certain ways, when we're willing to yield that, resurrection life comes up in us. Hallelujah. Mm. The life of God. Mm -hmm. It has power over death. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore. What did he say after his resurrection? And we look at it and go, well, come on, you're the one that got resurrected. Hmm. Now, if you understand the resurrection, hmm. you were crucified with me. Yes. You rose with me. So now you go. Hmm. Priest of Cain, heal the sick, yes. raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. And I am with you always, yes. even to the end.